Hey guys, this is Angie Rose with Angie Rose Health Coaching, and I'm here to give you your Monday Mojo Dose. So today we're going to talk about being prepared and how it can actually help you with cravings. So you're going to kind of see this last week and this week coming up, we're talking specifically in my tips on these things uh, and throughout the rest of the month because choices really do affect a ton of things. So we want to be set up. We want to be prepared because I think probably just about everybody has cravings at some point or maybe you have them all the time. I don't know. I remember in my past when I was struggling with uh, eating choices and my weight and even before I started losing weight, I struggled with cravings all the time. And then in the beginning of my weight loss, till I really learned how to eat and how to set myself up for success, um, I still struggled with cravings. Even though I was losing weight, um, that was a big deal for me. So I know most of my clients coming in, this is one of the big things they really wanna work on and they wanna get under control um, and they want to feel like they just don't have them. Now, I would love to say I never have a craving, but I do because sometimes cravings are emotional. Sometimes cravings are stress-related. Sometimes cravings are even just dependent upon who I'm with and where I'm at. And that just is the truth of the matter. But how I actually handle my cravings really is the key, okay? So I would love to tell you you'll never have them. Um, I think mine are very seldom and they're very controllable, but you know what? I know for people who are in the midst of it, it feels like it's going to never end and it's a never ending battle. So I just want to give you a little bit of hope today. So I would love you guys to share my videos. And if you do think that you get something out of this, definitely share this when you're done. Uh, make some comments. Let me know whether you're watching this live or you're watching the replay. Um, I just love to hear and see that you guys are showing up and you are getting some benefit out of this. So welcome to Monday and here we go, right? So let's start today about what is a craving. Let's kind of put some parameters on this because you know what? I think overall people just feel like that's all they ever do is crave. So there are a few things that I, just three things that I came up with that I felt like put a pretty good definition on it, okay? So number one, technically you're not hungry, but you're in the mood to eat something. And what I will find is a lot of times I will say something along the line as that sounds really good, or I'm in the mood for blank tonight. Or the other night my son came out and he said to me, he said, Dairy Queen sounds really good right now, mom. <laughs> and he caught me at the wrong moment because I'm not going to lie to you guys. Like I gave in and said, you know what? It does sound really good right now. So I had a little mini blizzard and I hadn't had one of those forever and it tasted amazing. And then I put it in my food journal and I was like, it was not 475 calories worth of amazing. I just have to be honest. <laughs> so that's why I don't have those things very often. But I was having a craving. Number two, usually that craving that you're having is for a specific type of food. So maybe it's ice cream, maybe it's chips, maybe it's cookies, maybe it's a margarita. I don't know what your cravings are, but maybe it's all of the above. I don't know. But usually if it's a craving, it's for a specific thing. Because here's the thing. Most of the time you don't hear people saying to you, man, I'm really craving broccoli. Okay, <laughs> they're not saying that. It's usually a craving of something that's very salty, very sugary, very, very hyper intense in flavor. Um, and you know what? The producers that market that stuff, they are smart and they know what they're doing. The food actually is hyper, I don't even know what the word is. I, it's in one of my tips this week, but it's, oh, it's hyper palatable, hyper palatable that it just you makes your palate sing. I don't know about you, but that's usually what a craving does. And number three, if it is a craving, it's usually not stomach hunger, meaning your stomach is growling, um, but it does mean that it's head hunger. 
Amy, how funny. Amy said, my granddaughter would say she craves broccoli because she loves it, and she's seven. Well, you're not going to hear too many adults saying they crave broccoli. <laughs> Awesome. So, Tiche, Amy, I was wrong. Okay. I love it. I love it. So, you know, the reality of it is, guys, is that taking control of your cravings really does matter. If you are someone who is wanting to lose weight, someone who's wanting to maintain their weight, <laughs> I love you too, Amy. Uh, if you are wanting to feel good and have energy and brain clarity and not brain fog. Um, a lot of those cravings are things that, like I said, they're high in salt, they're high in sugar, they affect our health. So choices really matter. You guys know I constantly say that, but it really is the truth even in your cravings. So, you know, last week I suggested to you guys in my tips, I said, maybe you need to do a food journal. And I didn't say specifically to excuse me, count calories and all those kinds of things. But really it was more of a write down journal to write down the things you're eating, when you're eating them and cravings and what is what is going on. Because sometimes a cravings food journal is a real telltale sign in what's going on, which I still believe my fitness pal can do the same thing, but some people don't wanna be that extreme, okay? So what does this food journal do when it helps you track cravings. Number one, it's going to help you figure out patterns. Do you have specific patterns that you find that are reoccurring consistently? Is it always after dinner? I have to have a little something sweet. Is it after five o'clock? I'm ravenous and I just can't stop myself from eating. Is it two o'clock in the afternoon, the afternoon office slump where I just need a little something to get through the rest of the day? Um, our goal here is to figure out where the patterns are and why they're happening. Secondly, it's going to give you some really great intel, guys. It gives you great information on what's going on in your mind, your body, um, and even just you and your choices. Okay, so it makes you very aware of what's actually happening. And for a lot of people, they'll say, you know, like, I want my cravings to stop. I want to lose weight. I want to be in control. But they really don't want to know what's really happening. It's like sometimes the less you know, the better. Um, but information is knowledge, guys. Information is knowledge. So I want you guys to know there is purpose to it. And there is a reason why that absolutely works. Hey, Elena, I just seen you pop on there. Con I was like, congratulations for popping on, but it's nice to see you. So uh, see that you're watching. I hope you're doing well. Uh, I just haven't talked to her for a long time, guys. So I had to like take a little squirrel moment. Um, thirdly, what does tracking your cravings share with you? Tracking your cravings is really going to help you distinguish between head hunger and stomach hunger. Okay, so I just need you guys to know, like, being aware, as I said, information is knowledge, and knowledge helps us to make better decisions, I believe, okay? They re it really does, if you choose to pay attention. Now, one of the things that I think most of us have gone through, or we do go through, is we feel a lot of shame and discouragement, and we feel like we're weak when we have cravings. Like, I should be stronger than this. I should be able to handle this. Why can't I just say no? Or even along the lines of just being, you know what? Like, I should be able to just not eat that, but I can't help myself. One of the things I used to say all the time was, I can't eat just one when it came to cookies or one piece of cake or one brownie or one bite. I don't know about you guys, but that really is such a mental and emotional attack and it's a stronghold. It's something that holds us back because the reality of it is we are very capable of saying no. It's just we're choosing not to. And there is that addictive side to a lot of the things that we're eating. Okay. So I just want you to know that a lot of times people feel this, but the truth is, guys, cravings are very normal. 
It actually is a signal. And I teach this to my clients who are in office with me that when we go over our craving sheet, or if you've been in any of my programs where I've taught on cravings, the truth of the matter is, guys, it is a signal that God gave our bodies to say something is out of whack. It's like the check engine light in your car that that check engine light goes on for a reason and our job is to figure out what is happening with it, right? Why is that check engine light going on and what do I need to fix, change, or be aware of? It's the same thing. It really comes back to paying attention and seeing what's happening with your body. And thirdly, I just want to say to you, Cravings absolutely are controllable, but we have to change some things we're doing physically and mentally and emotionally to make sure those cravings are getting under control, okay? So I'm going to tell you this week in my tips, there are a couple things that you can do, of course, when a craving does happen. Tip number one is always find a diversion. Okay, when our mind gets going and we start thinking, I don't know about you guys, but like when my mind gets going and I'm thinking about something, that's all I can think about. Okay, and then it seems like until I deal with it and, or get an answer or eat the food that I'm thinking about, then it won't go away. Okay, but I have trained myself. I've done this long enough to be very aware. And you're having a craving. You're super tired. You're super stressed out. You're whatever's going on. It's... I don't want it maybe menopausal, hormonal. I mean, there's a lot of reasons for cravings, guys. So I'm very aware a lot of times of what's going on, and I can control it and say no, okay? But maybe I need to find a diversion. So maybe I go for a walk. Maybe I take a nap. Maybe I take a hot bath. Um, maybe I call a friend on the phone. Maybe I read a book. Find a good TV show on Netflix. It's about mind over matter sometimes, not always, but sometimes. And it's about getting your focus on something different instead of the food that you think you're going to die if you don't eat. Okay. Um, the second tip I want to give you is sometimes that craving just isn't going to go away. So I want you to have healthier options on hand in the house, not the crap fantastic snack options. If you have that crap in the house, believe me, you're probably going to end up eating it. So obviously, this is the other thing. I just want to throw this out there. I don't know who's watching this now or who is going to watch this, but for whatever reason, this just comes up inside of me that's like, I need to tell you that your reason for having that stuff in the house is so your kids can have it, but then you end up eating it. Your kids don't need it either. Okay, so it is not about depriving your kids of things they love because you can't control yourself. It really actually comes back to the truth of the matter is your kids don't need it. You need to have healthier options for snacks on hand. So that way when the craving does hit, you know, obviously divert yourself first because if you just ate, there's a good chance it's not that you're hungry. And I always say, ask yourself, is this stomach hunger? Is my stomach growling or is this head hunger? What's happening, okay? But it seems obvious to just have healthy snacks on hand, but a lot of times what happens is you guys think to yourself, I don't need a snack. I don't need to have snacks in the house because I'm trying to lose weight or I'm trying to uh, cut back my calories or I just don't need it. But the truth of the matter is, you actually set yourself up for success by having that afternoon snack that is a healthy version of something or a healthy snack in general because it sets you up so at night you're not overeating, binging, um, you know, whatever else may go on. Nighttime, you know, sometimes after 8 o'clock, man, that's all bets are off <laughs> for some of us, okay? So... Been there, done it. That's why I can say that. But you know what, guys? Here's the thing. Have healthy foods on hand. Things like, um, of course, fruits and vegetables, um, beef jerky, nuts. I always, with beef jerky and deli meats and things, I always go uncured, okay? Um, but beef jerky, you know, good, healthy Greek yogurt, um, you know, things that are going to have a little bit of fat but have good fruits and good vegetables, I mean, that's a whole nother teaching on good snacks. But the reality of it is, you know that a little Dole cup with some yogurt is going to be way healthier than a mini blizzard, okay? 
or <laughs> a half a sleeve of Girl Scout cookies that are sitting in your freezer because you thought if you froze them, you wouldn't eat them. Wrong, because they taste better frozen. <laughs> All right, so last tip I wanna give you with this is don't skip snack time. Snack time really does matter and it really does play a huge role as long as you make the right choice to set you up for success in the evening and get you through until bedtime so you're not overeating and wasting all the good work you did all day long before you go to bed because you're gonna eat, you're gonna to go to bed, your body can't even digest all the stuff you just shoved in it and it stores it, right? So I just want you guys to know, if I can say anything, cravings really are fixable, guys. They truly are. And it isn't always about taking a pill to make cravings go away. It really does come down to having a nice balance within your foods, drinking your water, getting enough sleep, dealing with your stress in a healthier manner, whether that's seeing a therapist or a counselor or having coffee with a friend, prayer, <laughs> all that good stuff, whatever that may be. But cravings a lot of times are not just because you're craving. There's a lot of other reasons for it. So anyways, if this is an area where you have struggled consistently and you feel like you can't get it under control, then really guys, um, you know, I offer that one hour free consultation. Maybe it's time to work with me. I know we're getting past, summer's gonna be almost over, this week, a lot of kids going to college and kids are going back to school and teachers are going back to work and all kinds of things. So I know, obviously, officially, I think it's September 22nd or something. So I'm not giving up summer till I have to. But I know this is after Labor Day when people start really thinking about what they want to do. So come work with me one on one. The other thing I'm going to be offering for those of you who are nearby Grand Island starting September 13th. I am gonna actually be doing a weight loss support group in person. I've done a lot of um, group coaching and those kinds of things, and but in my building where I'm at, there's just not room for a lot of people. So I've actually rented a space here in Grand Island. Um, and every Monday night, I'm gonna be offering group, um, group support. So there'll be weigh-ins on Monday night, um, no measurements, I don't have time to measure everybody, but weigh-ins for accountability. Uh, I will do a teaching every Monday night. It'll be different than what I do on Mondays, okay? It'll always be different. Um, and then I'm offering that community support as well. So small groups or whatever we decide to do, I haven't quite figured out how that will all roll, but 30 bucks a month for four weeks. So that's what it's gonna cost. I'm gonna do a punch card. Um, I'm super excited about this because I absolutely love doing group coaching and working with people that way. Um, and I love to teach if you guys haven't figured that out yet. So I will be posting more as we get closer, but mark your calendar September 13th. So it's a week after Labor Day. Enjoy the rest of your summer. Um, but we're going to get rolling on that. So I would love to hear your comments. I know I posted another comment um, in my on my Angie Rose page asking who would be interested in something like this. So um, share the word, uh, put it on your calendar, make sure you're watching to see what's coming up. Um, so just another way to support you guys that maybe isn't one-on-one, -on -one, where maybe that's not within your budget, but having that accountability and connecting with other people who are going through the same thing and creating friendships and accountability partners and all those kinds of things, I think are super important for people to continue on their weight loss journey and just their healthy journey. It doesn't even have to be about weight loss, okay? so. I'm excited about that. So anyways, you will be hearing a lot more about that in the next month and what I'm gonna offer. Um, otherwise, that's what I got for you this week. You guys got this. I want you to focus, put all your effort into it. You're worth it. You deserve it. And you can come out of this stronger, healthier, and a better you. All right, guys. That's what I got for you today. We'll see you in a week.